everyone, welcome to another unboxing video. This time we are going to check on one of the best affordable gaming laptops with RTX 3060 graphic card, Asus TUF Gaming F15. The criteria I have put into the search filter are 11th gen Intel CPU with 8 cores, 16GB of RAM and RTX 3060 graphic card. And the reason for choosing such CPU criteria is because many games need solid CPU performance and 4 core or 6 core CPU might not be sufficient. 8 cores is the minimum I was willing to accept. While cutting the ceiling tape I can talk more about the CPU option where I have chosen 11 gen CPU as one of the criteria as that was the newest offered CPU generation for gaming laptops. We all like the newest components in our setup even though many YouTube reviewers are preferring 10th gen CPU, 11th gen is just newest on the market and made for better performance. And when you are watching this video while well, there is already 12th gen or 13th gen CPU, go for that one for sure. Next criteria I've chosen was the RTX 3060 graphic card but if you have bigger budget you can choose RTX 3070 or even RTX 3080. There is also RTX 3050 Ti, but for me the RTX 3060 is the lowest acceptable and good enough for the games I'm playing and also I have tested them on RTX 3060 within desktop with good amount of FPSs. Make sure you open the new tab with the link in the top right corner for that one. In the box we have set of documentation including the TUF gaming logo stickers, user guide and also this promotional letter offering premium service and warranty upgrade. It is worth to mention that RTX 3060 graphic cards are provided in two versions for gaming laptops, one in the range of between 80 to 95 watts and second in the range of between 115 to 130 watts. And power supply provided with this gaming laptop can supply up to 200 watts of power. And last artifact is the power cord, in my case it is the EU version. In this gaming laptop we have GPU with max 95 watts, so power supply with 200 watts will be able to provide enough wattage. Let me put the empty box with the stickers aside and we can summarize what everything we have found in the box. So we have power supply unit which can provide power up to 200 watts. Then we have power cord, set of documentation including the user guide and gaming laptop itself wrapped in the protective cover. Let me pull out the gaming laptop from the protective cover and this is the first look. As you can see the top cover is in grey color, Asus calls it Eclipse Grey. On one side of the laptop we have network connector, HDMI 2 OB, 2 USB type A, 1 USB type C audio jack and on the very left side the power connector. In front side we have the handle for opening it and on the right side we have 1 USB type A and exhaust grill for fans. There are three heatsink exhaust in total and this is one of them. Then at the bottom we have intake textured honeycomb mesh grill and there are cuts on strategic places to assure correct intake airflow. On the back side we have two heatsink exhaust and it is worth to mention that heatsinks and fans have self cleaning feature, which means there are special anti-dust tunnels located at the edges of the fans. The fans switch off completely when CPU and GPU temperatures are below 60 Celsius degrees in the silent operating mode. Now let's open the gaming laptop and on the keyboard we have the protective cover so let me just take it out. And this is the first look to keyboard with translucent WASD keycaps and brushed metal finished around the entire keyboard which is RGB backlit. If you are interested to know how thick or thin is the opened gaming laptop, the height is 2 cm which is 0.79 inches and that's given by the thickness of the cooling system. Now let's do a little bit of the sound test and there are two mouse buttons at the bottom of the touchpad so let's include those in the sound test as well. Keyboard has fairly normal sound, no rattling or squeaking, but I'm going to use external mechanical keyboard which you can review under the link in top right corner. And now let's unwrap the power supply unit, it is again wrapped in nice protective cover. And let's connect the power cord to 3 pin connector on AC DC adapter. We have nice cable ties as well for cable management on both cables of each side of power unit. 
Let's connect the DC power connector into the laptop's DC input port and the AC power plug I have connected to the wall outlet and it is time to power on the gaming laptop by pressing the power on button. And during the first power on it takes fair enough of time to see the ASUS logo. It takes 30 seconds actually and then another 30 seconds until you will see Windows installation wizard. The keyboard will be lightened up so you don't have to worry that it's not working. Then you will go through the Windows installation wizard and then once you will reboot it, there may appear BIOS update screen which you have to allow install. That one will take again a little bit of longer time to install and then after the reboot it will take approximately one minute to boot up into the Windows by occasionally having ASUS logo appearing and disappearing on the screen. Once the Windows loads up there is one absolutely important setting for gaming laptop and that is setting the preference to run all graphic operations on dedicated graphic card and that would be RTX 3060 in our case. To get the maximum performance first step is to check the ASUS Armory Crate and set it to Turbo option. By default it will be set on Silent or Windows option. By right clicking on Windows desktop you will get the menu option and by selecting the Nvidia control panel we'll jump into the guidance on how to disable integrated graphic card on gaming laptop even though we are not fully disabling it but rather setting it to be used as a preferred one. First step is to change the 3D settings from auto selection to high performance Nvidia processor. To be absolutely sure your game uses RTX graphic card you can change program settings and choose again Nvidia card. And one more setting hidden under link Windows graphic settings where we can enable hardware accelerated GPU, variable refresh rate to get higher FPS and choose graphic performance preference. Here you can browse for your game executable, hit add button and then under options you can select high performance graphic card preference. This will ensure that Windows is really choosing dedicated NVIDIA graphic card instead of integrated one from Intel. Next step is to change the physics settings. We will force set it to NVIDIA GeForce card and we will hit the apply button. By default it was set to auto select which gives the control to Windows operating system to choose the card to run the physics which is real time physics engine but Windows usually selects integrated one. You can monitor in Task Manager which GPU card gets the load during the gameplay. And now is the time to run the benchmark. I'll run the user benchmark to compare it with other users benchmarks. I'm going to download the binaries by hitting the free download button. And then we can run the benchmark application which will test the CPU, memory, SSD disk and most importantly performance of our gaming laptops RTX 3060 graphic card. I am speeding up the video as it is about 2 minutes to test each component and also to test how much FPS we can get from the graphic card by running various operations. Here is worth to mention that you really should be changing the settings I have mentioned in my previous step to force choose NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphic card. Otherwise everything will run by default on integrated Intel graphic card and that will give really poor results. While the tests are running you can again monitor in task manager to ensure most of the operations are running on NVIDIA RTX 3060. There will be still some Windows operations to run on integrated Intel graphic card and that's fine. Once the benchmark test completes we can review the result. There are three categories. First one is the gaming where we can see this gaming laptop is a battleship. Next category is a desktop with a result of nuclear submarine and third category is a workstation which gives result of aircraft carrier. By scrolling down we can review individual result for CPU, graphic card, SSD disk and memory which seems to be weakest component and there is suggestion to check XMP profile in BIOS to choose higher memory frequency. So this is something I can definitely explore if there is such BIOS setting on this gaming laptop. At the bottom of the page you can see comparison to other laptops with same CPU, GPU, SSD and RAM and you can see that many have ran the test with the default graphic card auto selection option which has resulted in running the benchmark on integrated Intel UHD graphic card instead of on the Nvidia GeForce RTX graphic card. Now let's listen to fan noise with increased volume.
As you can hear, fairly normal fan noise, no whistling and now let's have a look into how many FPS I'm getting in the game and you can see in top right corner that I'm getting fairly good frames per second. Integrated speakers are normal speakers, but anyway we are all using headsets similar to one in the video listed in top right corner which you can open in new tab. So in summary this is fairly good gaming laptop for reasonable and affordable price with 8 core CPU and Nvidia GeForce RTX 3060 graphic card. It has sufficient input and output connectors. I'm actually having it connected to external monitor even though the integrated display panel supports 144Hz refresh rate. Dedicated GPU RTX 3060 provides good amount of frames per second in games, but it is important to set the preferred graphic card in Nvidia settings which you would need to do on every gaming laptop. I have not tested the battery life as I am using it most of the time connected to the power outlet and the main reason for going with this gaming laptop instead of desktop is the price. If you found any part of the video useful hit the subscribe button to do not miss any future videos and until then cheers!